Coming up, the Optimus Club, Club of Kego Harbor is hosting its annual Halloween pumpkin decoration event. With me right here live on the splash to give you all the details that you need about that event. From the Optimus Club of Kego Harbor, we have Bill Portakis and Mike St. Louis. Thank you both for being here. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks for having us. Uh, yeah, it's our, our annual pumpkin decorating. It's a, a non-cutting event. Uh, we'll have uh, about 200 pumpkins there for uh, el local elementary school uh, age kids, typically. And uh, we'll be painting the pumpkins up, and uh, Bill provides us with a lot of uh, fasteners and things. Mm -hmm. So uh, we take fasteners and hammers, and uh, we bejewel them as well. It's great fun for all the kids. Oh, interesting. Okay. It already started off interesting by saying it's a non-cutting event. So you start to think, what are some other ways you can decorate it? And I love that you already stepped on that. So I appreciate that, Mike. So kind of get into it, Bill. If you could just tell us, give us the details of the event, the date, the location, things of that nature, what we can expect. Okay. So we're opening up at uh, 10 a.m. Saturday and the kids will come in. There'll be a line of, uh, decorations, pipe cleaners, cotton, and at the table, there'll be glue and paint, and the kids go to town, and uh, there's a drying area where we have two carpet fans, they dry, and then they come over to the photo booth, and they get to take a picture home uh, with their creation, uh, and so that's good, um, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, this is going to be our biggest one ever, because now mm -hmm. Chico's down, normally it was just for Roosevelt, so we have Chico, Gretzko and Scott oh. and all our elementary schools. So we bought 50 more pumpkins because of uh, mm. the extra school. Well, we invited uh, Refuge as well. Oh, right? Refuge as well. You know, uh, actually, we're doing a lot with Refuge, and uh, they opened their doors to us. That's pretty cool. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. And I'm glad that you are planning for more. As you said, you're inviting more people, more kids. You're expecting more, so you invested in more pumpkins, more resources. That's good to hear. Mike, bouncing back to you. We're seeing that this is an annual event, right? So that means there's been some events of this in the years before that. Can you just talk about the inspiration of not only creating this event, but the evolution of it throughout the years? Well, it started out at Roosevelt School, and we would have them inside there, and then uh, the damage to Roosevelt and the uh, pandemic that came along mm. kind of moved us outside to the parking lot there where we were just handing out pumpkins for a little while. And, uh, and then when uh, Roosevelt moved over to the old Abbott, we, uh, we started up again in there. And uh, it's been uh, quite successful. We've got to have a few other little activities going on uh, with the uh, kids as well. Cider, coffee, uh, donuts, things like that to, uh, for refreshments. Play a little Halloween spooky music, things like that. And uh, occasionally we'll show a Halloween movie or something. Not the real scary kind. Right, right, right. The, uh, you know, like uh, Nightmare Before Christmas or something like that. <laughs> right. That. Yeah. Jack Skellington. So uh, if this is definitely a wear your old clothes event, though, uh, mm. because uh, the, uh, the paint sometimes doesn't stay just on the pumpkin. Good point. Yeah, we encourage everybody to bring a box so they don't put a wet pumpkin in their car. See, these are all things, as you're, as you're speaking, these are things that I can tell you all learned throughout the years with these events. People started to, you know, get paint on their clothes or in their cars and things of that nature. So you're saying, hey, prepare, bring some clothes, some, some used clothes that you don't mind getting some paint on and bring a box. That way you don't have that fresh paint in your car also. So I, I appreciate that. And I'm pretty sure all the parents that will be attending appreciates that also. Can you, speaking of that, can you just talk, uh, uh, Bill, can you just talk about some of the responses you've gotten from families or even the community? about this event over the years? Well, um, it was sort of nice that, um, you know, now that uh, they split the people in Kego Harbor, you know, half go to Gretschko, half go to Scotch, at least they'll be able to see their classmates that they grew up in grade school with mm -hmm. again because they split everybody up, and that's important. And, uh, um, well, you know, like you said, you know, you learn – uh, from the past, and like one year we brought the pumpkins in there too cold, so we bring them in the day. They didn't paint well, so we bring them in a day early, so they're room temperature. And then one person noticed, I think the pumpkins are too big, and they were right. You know, we just never noticed. So now the kids can handle the pumpkins a little bit better. And uh, and that I call him Farmer John, but you know, the, the in Kego Harbor, he gives us a great deal on pumpkins, and he gets us really good pumpkins with good handles on them. 
and he's got them boxed in, in a container that's easy to move. Mm-hmm. He does a really good job for us, and uh, um, you know, and, uh, but um, I don't know. It should work well. It's easy, yeah. you know. I got a pallet jack. We can bring them in and out easier too. Yeah. We just have, to have that center door removed. And then I'm calling on some neighbors to help us Thursday uh, to set up. You know, we got to cover the tables and set things up. And, I like uh, that. I like that. Overall, everything that you said, Bill, just basically speaks to the community involvement, not only just the feedback, but them helping out from you. Uh, Farmer John, like you said, getting the pumpkins to neighbors helping out with moving things and setting up the tables and things. It's a community effort, and that's why we appreciate you all. And right here again, join us on the Splash Live from the Optimist Club of Kego Harbor, Bill Bertakis and Mike St. Louis talking about their upcoming Halloween pumpkin decorating event that'll be happening Saturday, October 26th. Mike, I'm curious to ask you, you all could have thrown any type of event for Halloween. It could have been an adult costume party, but you're choosing to focus on the kids with that. With that being said, can you just talk about how throwing events like this contributes to the mission and the values of the Optimist Club of Kego Harbor? Yeah, Kevin, I, I can, and, and you know, you guys have been really uh, kind enough to uh, help us uh, promote our our uh, monthly euchre tournament, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, that uh, started up again last month. And you know, it's uh, that euchre tournament helps pay for things like this. Uh, we make just a little bit of money on it at the charity event, right. and it is this community that comes together to to make all this happen. And uh, while we do a couple of things that are a little more adult oriented, uh, we all derive the most satisfaction of working with the kids. Of course. It is, uh, it is great uh, when the, they get their pumpkins all uh, decorated and they come over to Bill and they've got the uh, green screen or a uh, neutral screen in the background and they take a picture with their creation uh, and they get to take that picture with them. And it's also a really good opportunity. Uh, we do, like on my street, uh, I haven't had children on that street for a long time, but generationally it's changing now. So all of a sudden I will have trick or treaters at home. Uh, this is a great uh, opportunity to uh, welcome those new people into the community as well. Oh, yeah, you know, what else? There's a lot of grandparents in my neighborhood, and I encourage them to bring their grandchildren. Mm-hmm. You, know, you don't necessarily have to go to Chico to come. I mean, your grandparent, you're obviously well, you know, invited to come. And do something with your. What uh, Bill is really trying to say is, if you're an adult and you bring a kid, we're going to let you in. <laughs> right. You got to have, a, you gotta have a, a kid to attend, though. Right, right. Don't just show up by yourself. You know, it's usually we say a, a child has to be accompanied by the parent, but it goes likewise too. The parent has to be accompanied uh, yeah. by the child too. I appreciate that. Just a few more questions, uh, real quick, with you, uh, Bill. Just getting to you. Other events, I know we're slowly approaching the holidays. Anything else we can look forward to from the Optimist Club of Kego Harbor? Yeah, we're going to have a, a private uh, party with needy people that we get a list from the school. Uh, we're going to do that at uh, Santia Hall, and that'll be in January. And uh, we're going to help Gino with his uh, December 16th, uh, Monday. Uh, he does... Uh, Santa comes and we do the pictures and Mike and I will help with that. Nice. And so we try to assist that uh, people too that are trying to do the right thing for kids will be there, you know. Right, right. And we appreciate that effort too. And thank you for giving us a little sneak peek into what's in store for the uh, upcoming season from the Optimist Club of Kego Harbor. Lastly, Mike, the details of the event again that we're expecting for this weekend. Okay, it's uh, Saturday the uh, 26th. Uh, it uh, starts at 10. I would recommend people start getting there a little before yeah. 10 o'clock. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll have them come in. There will be uh, some big uh, uh, boxes full of pumpkins. They get to pick their own pumpkin as they come in, take their favorite one, and uh, we'll have them move over to some tables that will be prepared with uh, all the uh, the supplies that uh, they'll need to uh, make that pumpkin their own. Man. Oh, you know, another thing, too, uh, besides coming through the front door, they'll have the back door open, too. Okay. And the doors are numbered. Number eight is the closest one to the, it's in the lunchroom mm-hmm. there. Okay. And, uh, and so you, you know, they got, I guess by law, they got to have every door numbered. And uh, so, but it makes it clear for us, too. Like, no, well, it's absolutely. Better back there too. So if you park in the back and come through door eight, uh, you're right where you need to be. And yep. we should have some, uh, maybe some hay bales and corn stalks or something. 
kind of surrounding oh. the door, just so you know what it's, uh, that it is the uh, Halloween season. You know, yeah. another thing Mike does is um, there's some autistic kids, and when they have free time to don't do anything, they get fidgety. Uh, Mike brings puzzles in, and they can play with puzzles for a little bit, keep their mind occupied. Um, you, so keep, you know, that's something that we learned, that the autistic kids, when they're done, they uh, go crazy. With, uh, they don't have nothing to do. And uh, so we get puzzles, too, and they take them home. Yeah. Get to take them home. You know? That's a... That's very considerate, Mike. That's very considerate. And that's like we just said before, that just goes into the years of experience that you have with this event and the community that came out listening to the families and just providing what's needed. Thank you both again for your consideration, for your time and your information. Once again, from the Optimist Club of Kego Harbor, Bill Portakis and Mike St. Louis. Thank you both for your time. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks for having us.